All right. So let's start by creating a super, super simple function. Okay. And I couldn't think of anything simpler than just adding two numbers, for example. Let's imagine um, that for some reason, uh, we have a, an algorithm or a program that is going to be adding numbers very often. And let's imagine that we didn't have like the simple addition operator, which is definitely what we would use. Uh, and we wanted to create a function that can add two numbers together and can give me that result back. Okay. Um, the way that we would do that is by defining that operation, defining what kind of inputs and how many that function is going to take, and then defining what the result of that operation will be, and then implementing that code in the function. What does that look like? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is let's look at this program that I have here right now. I already have like a template for, I have two numbers here as doubles, and then I have that operation, which is adding the two numbers, and I'm printing that to the console so you can see the number 33 here. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to replace this with instead of a hard coded operation, I want to abstract this operation into its own function. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is by going all the way outside of this one function here. Okay. And I'm going to go back to that root. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define here in this scope, I'm going to define that there should be an operation called addition that takes two numbers and return a third number that is the sum of them both. The way we do that is very simple. The way we do that is first, we're going to define the function by defining its name. So I'm going to de define that the function is going to be called addition. Then I'm going to open and close parentheses. I'm going to open and close curly brackets. And it's giving me errors because we're still not there yet. But you're already pretty familiar with this idea of like open close parentheses, open close curly brackets uh, to define things. Then what I'm going to do is that here in the parentheses, what I would like to say is that I need to specify here that this function is going to accept two values that are going to be numerical. And because C sharp is a strongly typed language, we need to specify that those are going to be numbers or integers or strings or whatever they are. The way we do that is by typing, well, what I'm, my function is going to take two numbers. So whatever is given to this function first is going, I'm going to call it the value A. All right. Sorry, value A. And I need to specify that this is going to be A double. All right. And I also want to specify that my function may accept a second argument, a second thing. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to refer to it as value B. And it's also going to be of the type number, of the type double. All right. These two things here are typically referred to as the arguments of a function. So, what are the things that a function takes as inputs? All right. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm giving them placeholder names, I'm treating them as variables, if you will so that when I write code inside of the function, I can refer to that data that is coming in by these variable names that I just wrote here. All right. Now, the second thing that I need to do is I need to specify that whatever is going to get is going to be thrown back to whoever calls this the output of the function, what type that fun that output is. And remember, that is because C sharp is a strongly typed, so we need to always specify the type of all data that we work with. Um, because we're adding two numbers together, the result is going to be also a number. So the way we do, we specify that that, the, that that output is going to be a number is going to be by writing the type of the data that is an output before the name of the function that we just created. Okay. And then uh, another thing that we need to add and for the time being, I'm going to ask you to just trust me on this one. It will take me, uh, I will not be able to really explain why this is the case until we reach object oriented programming and classes, right? But for the time being, for this particular example in a console application, we will need to add the keyword static to the beginning of the function. Okay. Just trust me on this one for the time being, I will explain further down in this series why this is the case. Okay. Okay. We're ready. So we have the skeleton of a function that takes two numbers as inputs and returns a number as the output. 
So now what I need to do is inside of the function, I need to write the code, I need to write the algorithm that is going to perform that super um, high level calculation, right? And what that's going to be is I can do, for example, what I can say is I can, I can create inside of my function, I can create a variable and I'm going to call it addition added or whatever, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And then I can say the result of the value of this value has to be the value of the two inputs that have been given to this function combined as a sum, all right? If I do that, you can see that I should probably think that my code is ready, but it's not ready yet because if I go over the, um, if I go over the error that the compiler is giving me, it tells me that not all the code returns a value, which is a weird thing. But I want you to imagine that in this algorithm, instead of being like a simple addition, it was like a million lines of code, right? Where we would, we were doing a lot of like really complex operations to find the output, the result. If that was the case, the computer would not really know from, how would the computer know from those 1 million lines of code, which is the actual one value that needs to return back as the result of this function, right? The computer cannot know that. So it's us, we have to specify what is it that it's the result that we want to throw back as an output from this function. And the way we do that is by using what's called the return keyword. It's just as simple as saying at the end of the function, when you're done with your calculations, you write here return, which is a special keyword. And then you, after that, you return what is it exactly that this function should be outputting. In this case, it's going to be the value of the variable that we have defined called added, okay? And I see that there are no more errors anymore here, uh, so that's great. Um, so how can we now try if this works? Well, the idea would be let's substitute here a and b, and let's substitute this by my new function. You can see how addition um, it now shows up as part of what I can do in my program. And then I open parentheses and then I say, well, I want to add here the values of A and B. All right. And if that's the case, then uh, when I execute my code, I get the result of the value of 33. All right. How awesome is this? Uh huh. I want to take a second to, um, to make sure that we understand exactly step by step what's going on when we call this function and where, how the data is flowing. Uh, if we think of the main program, right, we know that we declare two variables, they have their, those values, and then we have this function call here. If you remember when we discussed statements, we discussed that statements are typically executed from the right hand part first, and then, uh, especially when it comes to declarations and assignments of variables, the first part that gets executed is the right hand most, and then that gets assigned to the value of the variable. So what's happening here is that when we reach this line of code, the first thing that gets executed is the, this part of the statement here. Then the computer jumps to the function declaration, and because the value of A is 10 and the value of B is 23, what the computer does is that it jumps to the function declaration, and then it assigns the value of 10 to the variable value A, and it assigns the value of 23 to the variable b, to the variable value b. So that when I am inside of my function now, value a and value b have those values that have been passed in here as arguments. Okay? They get added together, they get sent back as outputs of this function as a number. So at this point, this is the value of 33. And this whole thing, because it's the output of the function, it becomes the value of 33. That value of 33 gets assigned to the newly declared variable called sum. And from this point on in the value of the in the value in, in the life of the program, sum has the value of 33. Um, and so on and so on. I think what I want to highlight with this is that What's interesting about functions is that we basically declare placeholder names for anything that gets sent in, and therefore we can use them inside of the function. And we do that by somehow declaring kind of 
uh, variables on the fly that will be used inside of the function and then they will expire, they will cease to exist once the function is done because of the rules of variable scoping. And we have videos uh, up in the series where we discuss that topic, okay? Therefore, the fact that this is called A and B has nothing to do with this being called A and B. I could actually, I could actually call this A, I could actually call this B, and it would be, it, it would work exactly the same. And these two names don't have to do anything with these two names. And that, so actually, I'd rather name them something different to make this a little less confusing. Okay. Before we discuss other topics, I would like to do a really quick example, another quick example with some other data type for the function, um, just, just for the sake of illustration. Even though by the end of this section, I will be doing like a longer exercise where I will implement like many different functions and I will discuss like the nuances and different ways we can do these things. But for this one, I want to do something simple. I want to create a function that given the name of someone, uh, it can create a greeting message. Okay, so for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to create a function that is going to be called greet. And what this function is going to take as an argument, remember arguments are the names that we give to the inputs that are coming into the function. Uh, it's going to take a string, it's going to take some text that I'm going to refer to as name, all right? And then what I want is this function to take that name and create a full message of the kind hello name and then like an exclamation mark maybe. So the return of this function will probably also be text and therefore I want the return type of my function to be a string variable. And as I said before, please trust me on this one for the time being in console applications we need to define functions as static members. But we will get to that why that is the case very soon. So here inside of the function, what I just need to do is like very simple string concatenation, where I say, I'm going to create a message and the message is going to be hello, um, uh, with a white space, plus the name of the person that is coming in, plus um, an exclamation mark, for example. Or if you are interested in, for example, um, string interpolation, you can write the same thing by doing string message and I believe it I always forget what the syntax for this is. Hello name and then all right whichever whichever mode works better for you. I don't know. Okay. And once I am done composing my message, I can return this uh, this variable. Okay. Therefore what I can do here is I can say string greeting message is going to be equal to greet and for example hey greet Jose Luis all right and then what I will do is I will print to the console the greeting message that I just created all right let's see if that works okay all right yeah we do have a message here that says hello Jose Luis all right remember again what's happening this string gets sent to the function, it becomes name, then I can operate with that, I can create a new message, a new string, and then send that back. All right. Also, I when I teach, I like to be very, very explicit and break down all the possible steps. Uh, but you may actually for very simple operations, you may actually shorthand, you may actually want to shorthand these things. So for example, something that you could do is here, you may want to say, well, instead of creating a variable, adding things together and then returning that variable, something that you can do is you can just say, I'm going to here, oops, I'm going to, I'm going to here, sorry, I'm going to return the value of value A plus value B. All right, this that I just did is the exact same thing. It's just a little shorthanded. Similarly, I could just do here, I could just copy paste, Oh, I'm a little clumsy today, huh? Uh, what I could do here, I could just say, can I just return directly this message that I have composed? All right. And then this would work exactly the same. If I execute this, both things will work. And similarly, here in this program, I could just, for example, instead of creating the message and, 
a string variable and print it into the console, I could just directly print to the console the result of greeting Jose Luis. Remember, the way this would work is that this would get executed first, it would turn into a string message with the hello and the exclamation mark, and then it will be printed to the console directly. This approach might be easier if you don't need to keep the message for reusing it further into your program, if it's going to be just a one-off, okay? Then maybe you just don't want to waste the memory of declaring a variable for that. All right, okay, so let's move on to the next video and then let's talk about, um, about other topics related to functions.